You know, once you get off the ground, there could be other issues. Say you start feeling sick halfway into the flight. Could it be from the air inside the plane? CNN's Alan Chernoff is in New York for us. And Alan, you've been investigating this. Uh, what have you found? Well, Tony, fortunately, this issue is not common, but the fact is a growing number of airline crew and passengers are falling victim to toxic air exposure. One U.S. Airways plane in particular had repeated problems in recent weeks, causing pilots and flight attendants to suffer severe health issues. January 16th, ambulances meet U.S. Airways Flight 1041, arriving in Charlotte from St. Thomas. Eight passengers receive medical treatment. Seven crew members are rushed to the hospital after complaining of headaches and breathing problems. Neither the pilots nor flight attendants would speak with CNN for fear of losing their jobs. But Judith Morawski, industrial hygienist with the Association of Flight Attendants, has been talking with her union members. Headaches, confusion, uh, some disorientation, dizziness, nausea. Um, these, are, these are some of the symptoms that they've described. U.S. Airways tells CNN there was a leak on a seal of the right engine of the Boeing 767 that allowed toxic engine oil mist to enter the cabin. And there was a little bit of oil that seeped into that system, and that's what caused, it vaporizes, and that's what caused the symptoms of the uh, passengers. How could engine oil mist enter the air on board a plane while half of the air we're breathing in the cabin comes through the jet engines? It's called bleed air because it bleeds off of the engines, then travels through the wings and into the cabin where it mixes with recirculated air. Engine oil contains a toxin, tricresyl phosphate, that can cause neurological damage. I play manufacturing. Uh, Carrie Williams, who is a flight attendant for another airline, says that's what happened to her after being exposed to a fume event nearly three years ago. She says she suffers severe headaches and tremors in her arm. It just feels uncontrollable. I can't stop it from twitching or trembling, trembling. Indeed, all seven crew members of Flight 1041 have been unable to return to work because of their symptoms. They continue to experience neurological symptoms uh, that impair their daily living and have precluded them from returning to flying. Two weeks prior, the same plane, tail number 251, suffered two separate fume events. December 28th, Charlotte to San Juan. U.S. Airways Service Difficulty Report with the Federal Aviation Administration says a very strong odor smelling like wet socks and or dirty feet circulated through the passenger cabin and flight deck. Crew members reported trouble breathing, itchy eyes and stomach cramps. Two days later, the same plane on the same route, a foul odor entered the cabin. Passengers and flight attendants were feeling faint and nauseous. U.S. Airways says hydraulic fluid was released into the bleed air system on both flights. That fluid, Skydrol, is a known irritant to the respiratory tract. U.S. Airways takes this very seriously, and we do everything to our utmost to maintain the safety of the air quality for both our passengers and our crew. The airline says the plane was taken out of service after the January 16th incident for maintenance work. When it returned to service on January 21st, U.S. Airways reported to the FAA a scorched odor, like a gym or locker room, filled the aircraft. Maintenance found no problems, and the plane remains in service. This is a problem that all airlines share. Indeed, flight attendants say Northwest Airlines also suffered a series of three fume events over the past several weeks on the same aircraft, flying between Frankfurt and Detroit. That airline says, quote, we are investigating each case of employee illness, but at this time we cannot pinpoint a specific cause. Mm. Boeing concedes there is a chance of fume events, but the company says the air on board its aircrafts is safe and healthy. Tony? And Alan, more generally, how often does this kind of thing happen? Tony, there has been a study done for the British House of Lords, and that study found that there is a fume event one out of every 2,000 flights. That doesn't mean every one of those events has oil coming into the cabin, but some sort of contaminant coming in. And who is um, most susceptible? I've got a good guess here. Who's most susceptible to this bad air? 
Well, the folks who are on the planes all the time, so yeah. we're talking about the pilots yep. and the flight attendants, they are definitely most at risk here. Ellen, appreciate it. Thank you.